Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning November 30th, 2020. We have a lot to get into. Uh, but before we get into the message here, I will be providing some more content for the Gumroad platform. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's really simple. It's just another digital platform. I can speak a little more freely over there and that is the platform where I sell my courses, extra reading videos, that sort of thing, meditations, you know, all of that. So that will be over at Gumroad. I'll be filming those so long as nothing comes up, <laughs> okay? I had a tough time even getting the 2021 videos out, but whatever. The other thing I wanna do for YouTube is to continue on with that Archangel series where I'm giving you little snippets about the Archangels and, uh, you know, things like that. Getting prepared for 2021, that'll be over at Gumroad. So all of that is to come, I will keep you posted. I wanna dedicate this shirt today to my sister who has a plaid problem. <laughs> Her whole house is covered in this. So uh, I'm wearing this for Kim, there we go. All right, so let's get into the message for this week. And of course it's not like for linear time. This can go on for whenever you are attracted to this video. But um, I think what we're dealing with here, we're learning to let go of our fantasies and our fantasies might be goals that we set for ourselves that we realize you know i didn't go i'm not going after that i'm not learning how to do all of that so i am doing something i love i'm going after that so that my life has meaning or so that i look impressive to someone and you know i mean it's very easy for us to say no 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 not me but we all do it we all do it. We all want to feel like our lives are successful. And that success right now is being defined by how much you're doing in this world, how much money you're making, what position do you hold, do you have a lot of power, how you're perceived, image, you know, all of that. So I think this is a time where we have a chance to kind of break free of that. This is going to be hard, I think, for most of us. But it ultimately is going to be something really beautiful too because it's going to be very, very freeing when we suddenly realize we can put, you know, more energy into our peace, <laughs> being heart-centered and letting our lives unfold in the way that they are meant to as opposed to trying to become something realizing that you already are. This also pertains to our spirituality and our spiritual practices. One of the things I've been really exploring and again it's tough it's not an easy thing to do when I, it comes to my spiritual beliefs how much of that am i uh dis, you know using to disconnect from my life when things get too hard and hiding behind my beliefs how much of that is really spiritual openness and how much of that is some contrived again fantasy that someone else came up with and is now brainwashing everybody else a lot of times people think that if they come into the spiritual community that they are escaping mainstream <laughs> brainwashing and you're not. It's just another brand of brainwashing coming into this. So that is something I'll just share with you guys. I am really looking at that and I'm trying to go a little bit deeper. Like what, what really feels authentic and what are other things that are just labels that are thrown at us? It's a spiritual convention and we're all supposed to just fall in with it. You know, it leaves things wide open for toxicity where someone can come and say, I'm more special than you because this is what my soul imprint is. And they have some big label for it. And they are oftentimes very convincing, aren't they? The 2012 era, <laughs> I'm an incarnated angel. I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a star seed. Listen, I don't doubt that there are star seeds out there, but I think that they are quieter than the ones that are out there trying to use it to put themselves above other people. And I'm at a point now, this is another thing I'm working on, where I can't care whether that bothers people or not. <laughs> I gotta come out, I have a message that I have to deliver and it's going to get delivered. And if people's feelings get hurt, I don't want you to be hurt, obviously, but I would invite you, you know, in every single one of my videos, it's all about stopping and thinking. And I'm doing that too, right? So I think there's some cleanup. I'm even hearing that right now. There's some cleanup that's necessary. 
yeah, because, you know, I've said this before in previous videos, this is why we haven't been trusted with this information before now. Because as it starts to come out a little bit, what do people do? They run away with it. They contrive a whole story around it. Then they tell other people, this is how it is. You ever have anybody lecture you on spiritual concepts? Or say, you know what? I know now not to let people walk all over me. And you know that the person saying that is someone who walks over other people. But they think that if they appear like... <laughs> Uh, the person who's being healed, that that's going to draw more energy to them somehow. There's a lot of fakeness, a lot of toxicity, and it's going to burst open now. And you have a choice whether you're going to continue on either behaving that way or cleaning up your act. Or if you get pulled into that kind of stuff, waking up to it. See, people don't like to think that they're getting taken advantage of. Makes us feel silly, right? It makes us feel like we're <laughs> gullible. Or something like that but you have to understand the people who are in charge of this kind of brainwashing they are masterminds at this and if you're a sensitive person it is going to be very easy for you to get sucked into that okay so this is a slow process of learning and this is coming into 2021 too learning to open up learning to let go of your labels I'm a this, I'm a that. As a matter of fact, I would, I can definitively say this. Anybody who comes at you and says, this is exactly where my soul comes from. This is exactly who I am. Be very careful. We, I'm feeling this right now. Humans don't have the capability to fully understand the expansiveness and I'm even feeling like we're sort of designed to be a little bit narrowly focused. Because we each have a job to do, right? Or an experience to have. That's the job, is to have the experience. And so, can't get sidetracked, right? So for people to say, I know definitively, I am this, that, and the other. I'm getting the feeling here. That's the processor malfunctioning. And I know a lot of you are not going to like hearing that because it threatens the shell that we put around ourselves. It's like tearing the curtain back and letting all the sunlight in and you're not ready for it. And so the ego is going to say, attack, attack to protect. And that gets in our way. The labels are tripping us up. The concepts and having to define them and try to fit them into a logistical story is getting us tripped up. And we're in that process now where we're supposed to be letting that go. So we can relax, I think, is the message here. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> we can relax. But when somebody rips away our sense of safety because we've been hiding behind it, if it was so easy for it to be ripped away, it, you know, obviously it wasn't solid. So we're having to get honest and be truthful. You know, I think a lot of us who, again, I'm exploring this myself, a lot of us who get into these spiritual communities and practices and things like that, there's something that's unplugged within us. And instead of healing the trauma, instead of healing the pattern or admitting to ourselves, you know what, my wiring maybe got off at a certain point in my life. Have you lost your empathy? Did you never have any empathy? Or have you lost your compassion? You know, I think a lot of times we get so overwhelmed. We just go, you know, I can't listen anymore of that. This is our chance to, if we're going to understand our truest nature, right, and that'll be, you know, a long time coming as we evolve, we have to let go of this human need to have an identity, you know what I mean, to be defined by terms. Beyond here, there are no terms. 
No, there's not. And it would be very, very difficult for us as humans in these human bodies with these human ego, third dimensional ego consciousness brains to even fathom what we really are. And the harder someone tries, the more awake we should be about that. And if you can show them some love, sure, do it. But if they have a need to either put themselves on a pedestal, or maybe they're not putting themselves on a pedestal, but they are hiding behind what they think is their soul team or what have you. Yeah, they're saying something's misfiring. Something's misfiring. Instead of going through the process of being human, which means you go through the challenges, you go through the heartbreak, you go through the loss, you go through the traumas. And then you use this brain and this heart to see the underlying understanding there, the lesson, to have your insight and to move through it. I'm hearing now that when people try to rush to something they might remember, okay? But when you're trying to rush into it, you're trying to go back into this story, but in a form that doesn't fit. You don't fit in that story when you're in this form. You're, you're not doing your work. You're not doing what you came here to do. You're trying to escape it. Please don't use, and this is for all of us, but it's sort of like, please don't use um, the spiritual opening to hide. You know, the spiritual practice is about finding. It's about remembering. It's about coming home to you. Yes? And when you come home to you, there's all this connection. There's all this connection. And you realize that this thing that you define as you is also you and you and you and you and you and you and we're all kind of together in this. And we can start to unplug from the war story, from the fighting story, from the you're my enemy story, from you're not pretty enough story. You don't make enough story. We might then not see so much of bruised egos that want to go out and slander people. I know that one well. You don't even know somebody and you're going to go out and say all these untruths <laughs> right? and try to ruin their name. That's only going to come back to you times 10. And that's evidence when you have pieces of what you put out in hiding. When we find our way into that authentic heart and remember who we really are, there's no need or want to hurt anybody. And that means revenge too. There's no need for it. Truth, truth. The other thing that we need to start doing, again, me too. Um, the other thing that we need to start doing is stopping and going, okay, the story that I'm telling myself, is that actually how it is? Or am I so afraid of having my boundaries crossed that I maybe make myself too much of a victim or I get too tough or, you know, whatever comes out of you as your defense. Or I say, you know what? I'm not engaging because I'm all about positive vibes. When we start seeing that sort of thing, we need to stop and ask, is it really like that? Or am I telling myself that because I'm so afraid that as this goes on, I'm going to lose something, a piece of myself or a piece of my stability, for example. And if you can admit that to yourself, now if you're somebody who's like, no, 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 this is 100% the other person and that's all there is to it you're in trouble 
it's never 100% the other person. <laughs> never, never. Now, you can have somebody who's trying you, okay? Even if you're in an awful situation, you still have accountability there. What in you couldn't say no to that person? That's your chance. That's your chance to work through that. Where does that come from? Where is that going back to? What, what moment? Victimhood mentality. Yeah. It's hard, isn't it? I get it. I, I do. But it's time for us to sit quietly and have our quiet understanding and understand the truth, our part in things. And if there are patterns that are playing out over and over and over again, what is it trying to tell me? What is in my face where I can't escape anymore? I can't just pretend like it never happened. I remember there was a spiritual practitioner one time who uh, said, I, I don't want to ever think about my childhood ever again. And this is a person who does not participate in society. They move far away, out in the middle of nowhere. And my heart broke because I understand that. I, I get it. If I sat here and told you <laughs> the stuff, man, the stuff, I understand. But I think the message is coming through and why that example is coming up is that this person escaped, disconnected, told themselves that they're from a star system. Which, listen, hey, yo, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that that's not, <laughs> that's not it, that doesn't, I don't know. But neither do you. Yes, I do. Don't you tell me to doubt myself. No, you're saying that because the practitioners who told you you're from a star system told you to never doubt it. And isn't that convenient? Don't you ever doubt what I tell you. You should doubt everything. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I know doubt is like low frequency or whatever. That's how people see it. But you should question things. Critical thinking, guys. Critical thinking. Tuning into your own heart. You'll know the difference if what I'm saying right now makes you feel threatened. And your immediate reaction is to go deeper into the story that you've told yourself. There you go. You got to look at that. Why are you defending it? There's something there. And I don't say this to be like, don't you tell me I'm wrong, but rather take that opportunity. It's right there. I've gone through it many times myself. I'm still going through it. I'm right there with you guys. But don't do yourself the disservice of going into something again to hide behind or hide within. We're learning our truth. And that truth doesn't have anything to do with, I'm going to stand up and be powerful and blah, 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 blah. You know, that's another thing. <laughs> right? What we're talking about here is the truth from here. Just the heart. You know, I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, man, you know, when, whenever we have a crisis of faith and things are breaking down, and you're kind of wondering like, what is this world all about? Like, what are we all about? What is our place? Yeah, I have these deep thoughts. Most people just sit around watching Netflix on a Saturday night. This is me over here going, hi, <laughs> I'm a nerd, whatever. Um, but, you know, <laughs> what ended up kind of coming to me was, you know what? The most solid thing that we can hang on to is love. So long as you haven't allowed yourself to get too disconnected from that, you can always come back to love. So... When you're in that space, it doesn't matter really what expression of love you believe in, what deity you believe in. We don't need to have a separation anymore. I know, this is like a little overly simplistic, but I'm gonna choose that for now and you do what you want, but I'm gonna choose love. And even when I feel anger, towards someone or a circumstance or something like that. I'm not going to be fake about it. Like I said, you know, don't just pretend to love something when you don't. But I'm going to look at that emotional response and ask where it's coming from and why do I feel so threatened right now? And can I still come from a place of love? Can I still show myself some love? 
Stop self-sabotaging, right? We do it in many forms. Anything else on this, guys? <laughs> this is kind of a, a deep one. And, you know, like I said, I'll do a video for Gumroad um, talking about preparing for 2021 because this is the very thing we're coming into. This is the very thing we're coming into where everything we thought we knew it's like a giant, I'm seeing a giant door sort of swing open. And we see we weren't entirely wrong, but we didn't quite have it right either. Because where we were, that was the space we were in. That was the thinking we were functioning from. And that's the best we could do to try to figure it out. Avoid anybody who says they have it all figured out. <laughs> okay. Avoid anybody who says they got all the answers. They're up to no good. And you're going to see that. At, you're just going to see it now. And as we go into the rest of our lives, it's going to open more and more and more. It might get a little rough before it gets better. A lot of people are going to be in denial. They're not going to want to break away. Especially people who think that, you know, the most important thing about being human is having money and power. And having clout. They're going to resist. And we all do that. We all do that. Me as a YouTuber. <laughs> what do I always say? Thank you for subscribing. Why do I want you to su subscribe? Because the higher my numbers are, the more my video gets suggested. Right? The more people who come in, the more ads that run, and I can pay my rent. It's not much fancier than that. I know people have judgments i have <laughs> people have judgments about the car i drive which is so funny to me because what you don't understand is that i got it for the price of like a passat okay i mean <sighs> mama knows what she's doing over here okay <laughs> no it was just timing it was just like really good timing but you know um, i have a very simplistic life and you know that is a part of my livelihood and people coming to me and trusting me to do their personal readings that's all a part of my livelihood so we we all are there in one uh way or another we're all really concerned about popularity the numbers and then people who aren't popular they have to hide their numbers right <laughs> so you know again we're not it's not just people who are stockbrokers or whatever, whoever you deem is like the people who are getting all the money, you know, business people or whatever, it's not just them. We run on money and we are all concerned about it <laughs> in one way or another. Even if you say you're not, please, we all need to pay the rent, right? So we're gonna start breaking uh, free of some of our old ideas. And I think that's like the bottom line but it's gonna be a huge process. There are gonna be things that we need to let go of. There are gonna be things that we need to sort of admit to ourselves. And you're not gonna to want to. You're not gonna to want to. We always wanna hide, don't we? In 20, going back to 2012, that was all about hiding. That was all about getting pulled into these stories. And I was there too. Go back and look at some of my old videos. Wow. <laughs> I mean, some of the evergreen content that I have up. Wow. Wow. I feel myself changing. My content will change. I don't know what it'll look like. I'm kind of tempted to go down the path of ASMR. <laughs> Only because people like, I have like uh, some people from the ASMR community that come here and watch this. I don't think they're into like spirituality, but they like my voice. So thank you guys. I appreciate that. Um, but you know, like using the cabochons, those make a little sound on the glass and then they make a sound on the canvas. So the canvas kind of sounds like a drum when they, when they drop on. It's just, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I'm still exploring and just trying to see, but as far as what the belief system is, I feel, I feel the message that they're giving us. And there's so much more to it. But um, I think that'll be it for now. Like I said, I'm gonna be creating some other content so long as things don't, <laughs> goodness me, things don't 
go down, okay? Let's get onto the cards. All right. Let's see what we have here. As I was mentioning, if you like the content, please make sure that you subscribe. As I said, it's part of my livelihood. And also part of my livelihood is a uh, personal reading. So if you'd like to get a personal reading with me. So if you're, the way I do readings is uh, if you're dealing with something in your life, okay, you can come and ask about that. But that thing that you're going through right now is teaching you something far deeper. And it's the far deeper part that we look at. Yes. So no one's going to tell you what to do. <laughs> you're going to come, you're going to get uh, hopefully some clarity and hopefully you walk away empowered and ready to get back into that human existence. That's what I do. So if you want to come and have a little reading like that, they are all done digitally. Don't be scared. I tune in for you. I make an MP3. I email it to you. It takes no time commitment on your behalf and I can just tune in whenever I feel that it's coming in, right? And I can just capture it. So you're gonna get just as much out of it, <laughs> I promise you, if not more, because when we're on video or on phone, you have the, uh, the electronic glitches, um, people trying to negate or affirm right there in the moment. And sometimes that can interrupt the channel. That's not a bad thing. It's just, I feel like with the digital recording, you're getting so much more. Okay, so that's how it's done. Angelsouls444.com. You can go over there and see what I have if that sounds like something you're interested in. And of course, Gumroad. I'll have some bonus readings over there, how to get through 2021. And just, like I said, I can say more on Gumroad than I can here at YouTube. And, uh, you know, of course, keep an eye out for Twitter, Facebook, on YouTube, the, the community posts. Um, they say Instagram. <laughs> I'll make sure I post it all over once the Gumroad stuff is up, okay? And that's gumroad.com slash angel souls. And a special shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Again, you guys really help me be able to do this. And I appreciate it so, so, so very much. All right. And thank you for, yet again, thank you for subscribing. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> all right, guys. Oh, oh, that was me. I almost dropped the deck. It happens. All right. A great opening, a great awakening. You know what? There's something happening in December. Remember I said it's like the gate kind of opening? And then it's sort of like, oh, oh. <laughs> like for people who resist that, uh, and we're all susceptible to resistance, right? Uh, they might have a hard time with it. It might scramble them a little bit and yet for others it's going to be like oh thank god it's finally here it finally happened i finally understand but if we are not willing to take accountability for our part in things it's not going to go well it's just not going to go well so that's I, I think that's just kind of where we're at right now it's just where we're at and you know again i'll share with you i am working on a very deep level through past traumas, starting from the earliest moment in my childhood. And it's not fun. It's not fun. But I'm ready and I'm doing it. And that's, that's the trick there. When you're ready, <laughs> right? When you're ready, and of course, make sure you have proper support. Spiritual videos are not a replacement for therapy, guys. It's not a replacement for therapy. And be very discerning about what kind of therapist you work with. If you feel as though you're with somebody who is not right for you, then, you know, find somebody that you feel comfortable with, but, you know, make sure you're doing the work. So, you know, as, as much as it's not comfortable to look at all those things, uh, I just realized recently a memory started coming up again and I, re I started to remember, and I talked to my family about this, where we escaped, I gotta be careful what I say here, but, um, cause I know I have some young viewers, but adults try to follow what I'm saying here. Um, me and my family escaped people who do bad things to other people over and over and over again. We were in a very, uh, think about what was happening in the early 80s with bad guys going into restaurants with bad things. We were in one of those restaurants, me and my family. But we got away, we got away, and eventually they were caught. But you know, like that's something that I, I had, oh God, I had blocked that out. And just now started to remember it again and process it. 
processing, eventually I'll get there, processing the sexual harassment that I dealt with pretty much all while I lived in New York City. Dealing with, when I lived in Los Angeles, a friend uh, set me up because she wanted an audition, set me up on a date where something horrible happened to me. I'm gonna sit here and tell you this. Because I hope that by me saying this and saying, hey, you don't need to be ashamed. It's time, this is the time with the right support to make sure you are processing all of those things that have been utter nightmares for you. Whatever that's been for you. And it's been interesting. I'm, I'm looking at things not from like a victim standpoint, but as a, like just very, like sort of curious and watching how that has affected how I've communicated in the past. Sarcasm, pushing people away with sarcasm. Being terrified my boundaries are gonna get crossed again. Acting like the tough girl when really I'm one of the most sensitive people you ever meet. I'm a big mush ball, total mush ball. <laughs> you know, but that makes it very easy to get sucked in by people who wanna feed off of that. So I understand that aspect as well. Again, I say this to you so that you understand you're not alone if you're going through something like this. And it is your time, again, when, you're, when you personally are ready, it's your time to look at this, okay? Whatever it is for you, whatever your truth is. All right, now we're getting on to the cards. Me and my family also escaped a tornado. If ever you wanna hear <laughs> that story, oh my gosh, <laughs> there was a lot. First card out, nothing will come of this situation. Void of course, moon. Nothing is going to come of the way we have been approaching life. And that's really what we're talking about here. It's this moment of we can't keep going on the way that we have. We can't keep expecting things outside of us to change to make us happy. Part of understanding who we are as human beings and the loving power that we have is to stop and change course when we know it's time. To stop and look at what chases us when it's time and for everybody's going to be different again i'm just um, presenting this here for when you're ready but if you're somebody who refuses to look at anything nothing's going to come of anything you won't even get a chance to kind of go in give yourself this chance there's something beautiful coming and it's going to be hard one it's not going to just sort of be presented on a silver platter, right? I mean, we have to admit some hard truths. If we are going to evolve and keep going, there needs to be a reboot. And I don't think that reboot is exactly what we think. I'm curious to see what that is too. All right. Uh, you're very close to achieving your goal. Give us moon. Now remember the goals are changing. Yes. I make sure my hair is back away from <laughs> my microphone. Um, you know, your goals are changing and the goals don't necessarily have to be these surface level things. Because again, when we're looking, even that stuff that I was telling you that I'm working through right now, that's still just surface level stuff. It's deep surface level stuff because <laughs> the surface level is pretty, pretty layered, right? Um, but when we're talking about what informs our choices, what path have we chosen in our human story? It's time for a turn. It's time to go, is this really what I want? Not just, you know, for your life right now, but for your whole human story. Where do you as the hero of your own story you get to have your turning point. When does the story stop being about struggle? Yes, there will always be challenges, but we can choose whether we struggle or not. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. 
We're very close to meeting our goal here, guys, and that is understanding what true freedom is. And true freedom is breaking away from how we've always felt we had to live. Giving ourselves the freedom of love. And that's love flowing through us. Think about everybody who, who will or would do something horrible. Why, why do they even have the capacity to do that? There's no love. We, we call it high frequency. We say they're low frequency. And it's not as simple as, oh, let's just show them some love. Because if they're not in a love space, they're, not, they're gonna be irritated by that. The frequency is too off from where they are, okay? But if we understand that, Maybe going forward, we'll be a little more careful with our children. Maybe we can watch out for all the other kids as well. I'm telling you, it starts in childhood, I think. Anyway, a win-win outcome is forecast full moon in Libra. If we allow this process to unfold, we will have a natural balancing. A natural balancing. And then your heart opens up. And all those things outside of you that's ever bothered you, you start to see why it bothers you and you're getting your equilibrium. Maybe you're not so susceptible to worrying about other people's expectations. I heard somebody say, it's kind of interesting that Angel Souls isn't doing her deep channeled messages anymore. I wonder what's behind that. <laughs> and I'm like, um, I've evolved. <laughs> like, it doesn't mean that, you know, I can't go back into a channeled message, but this is what's appropriate right now, right? And you get to a place where you can laugh about those things and maybe send a little love and say, yeah, here you go. If you want it, if you're in a space where you can perceive it and accept it, take it. Take my love. I've got nothing but love for you, all right? So a win-win outcome is forecast, all right? And then we have, gosh, the end of a tough cycle approaches, full moon and Capricorn. We're coming through, guys. We are coming through. Please do not think it's about your surface level circumstances. Those can change. And as I was explaining about the readings, you can always look at your surface level thing that's going on, whatever kind of situation is happening for you, and we can look at the deeper thing. But you're not defined by, by the story you are just experiencing in the story. Okay, and you can change it at any time. And that's what we're learning to do, how to really change it in a beautiful, loving way, not in this sort of shallow, if you want a million dollars tonight, you can manifest it. Here's how. <laughs> I was living in my car and look at this great mansion behind me now. I manifested it and you can too. Let's talk law of attraction and just regurgitate everything that was in the secret. Here we go. Oh, she's bright and sunny. Okay, yellow, purify your body. The number is 22. So here we are about balance again. And purifying your body. Yes, you can take that quite literally where you are, you know, doing some sort of like, I don't know, healthy eating or something. But I think, <laughs> I think purify your body means where, where are those traumatic memories stuck in your body? Where is the energy not flowing? as freely as it could. Are you ready? Are you ready to let that be cleansed away? And to not take this approach of like, yes, I am. But, yeah, I am ready. Because being truly ready doesn't come with a show. When you're trying to put on a show to show everybody how spiritual you are, you're not spiritual. When you're trying to show everybody how ready you are, you're not ready. When you try to prove how wise you are, that's the most unwise thing you can do. Where are things stuck within you? And again, I'm doing those too. Hi. <laughs> and yellow, of course, is the solar plexus. So what do we do for our self-esteem? What do we do to feel important? 
and to feel like we belong in this world. Again, there's so much more. I will approach it in another video that will be up at Gumroad. But for now, process that. Leave your comments down below. Of course, as always, I'm sending you so much love and take care. Bye-bye.